Okay, hello, welcome, Precalc C, Fall 2020. It's Mr. Rose. I'm recording a video, uh, which I promised I would do 48 hours ago or something like that. But anyway, here we are. It's Wednesday afternoon. On the first day of school, which was Monday and Tuesday of this week, we did very little math. We kind of talked about um, our selves and this class and the situation and that we would be nice to each other and patient and flexible. So uh, we also talked about the kind of big uh, goal of this month was to learn about solving systems of equations and matrices. And uh, we did maybe five to ten minutes of very quick uh, things uh, that were review from Algebra 1, including just how to solve um, a system of equations using the method of substitution and the method of linear combination. And I promised at the very end that I would uh, make a video that um, addressed uh, the logic of the method of linear combination. And uh, this logic is actually, I think, it's more subtle uh, than, than, than um, you, would, you would guess, maybe, um, from, from, from your experience doing this in Algebra 1, which you probably thought this was pretty easy. Uh, so anyway, here we are, and uh, this is actually the exact problem that we did. Uh, okay, we didn't really even do it in class. We, I, I had it up on a, a static piece of paper, and you just kind of looked. Uh, but we talked it out, uh, solving this system of equations. And it involved uh, multiplying the first one by 7, multiplying the second one by negative 3, and then adding, and the y's disappear, and then you're sort of done. Okay, so... Uh, what is really going on uh, is now the big question that we want to answer. This is going to be kind of slow, um, but you can watch on 1.5 speed uh, at least. Okay, so uh, let's just like look back. Let's, uh, in order to understand the logic of solving a system of, uh, of equations, uh, perhaps first we should make sure that we are completely clear on the logic of solving uh, even just simple uh, equations with just one variable. So um, let's just kind of go all the way back to Algebra 1 and uh, there's there's more here than, than you might think. So um, uh, alright, well here we are. Consider just what would be a very simple equation and I mean you probably did stuff like this uh, even before uh, Algebra 1. You, you probably did stuff like this in 6th grade or something or, or maybe earlier, 5th grade. Uh, it's a simple linear equation with just one variable. Okay, so first of all, um, what does it even mean to solve an equation uh, with one uh, variable? Uh, and by that I mean, what is a solution? Uh, and uh, I think the answer is, well, it's pretty clear, right? A solution uh, to an equation with just one variable is a number which, when substituted in for that variable, makes the equation true. And here you can just kind of do it in your head almost. Uh, it's going to be 2, right? So if x is 2, then uh, 18 minus 7 is 11, and so in fact, uh, if someone just whispers 2, uh, it's, a, it's a trivial matter of computation to just uh, confirm that x equals 2 is a solution. Okay, um, but uh, that doesn't really explain how we found out that 2 is a solution, and so for that there's like a whole thing that they teach you in Algebra 1. And what they teach you is like, you know, do stuff, right? There's this algorithm, and the algorithm is basically isolate x. And so we, uh, you're told in Algebra 1 to like add um, 7 to both sides. All right, and this is really, honestly, it's not that hard. Uh, but uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe this is a little bewildering because after all, here I am, I'm given an equation, uh, and the goal is to find um, a, a value of x which makes this equation true. And the first thing you're going to tell me to do is to write a new equation? Well, well, what is this new equation? Uh, and what does this new equation have to do with the old equation? Uh, I thought we were trying to solve uh, the first equation. Well, what's the second equation doing here? Well, the next thing you do, you're told to do in this algorithm, is uh, to um, divide both sides by 9. So then you just get x equals 2. And suddenly you're supposed to just stop. Uh, and so I think this uh, entire algorithm is a little bit mysterious, right? It's like equation, 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 and then at some point you just there's nothing left to do and you just decide that that's the answer, which it is. Um, but uh, to fully understand this process, I claim, uh, this is maybe a conversation which is more appropriate for like, you know, middle school math teachers. Any, any good quality middle school math teacher should be able to articulate the precise logic of what's going on here. And uh, in particular, you should be able to articulate um, the relationship between these three equations. 
these equations do have a relationship uh, with each other. And uh, the relationship is that they are all equivalent. Uh, what really I am doing when I add 7 to both sides is I'm creating a whole new equation. Uh, but I claim that these two equations are linked together in some kind of deep way, such that uh, anything which is a solution to this equation is also a solution to this equation. And also, dividing both sides by 9 produces this third equation, which I claim uh, is equivalent to the second one, and hence equivalent to the first one. And equivalent in the sense that uh, any solution to this equation is a solution to this equation, and vice versa. Uh, and therefore, oh, and why is that true? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, let's examine this uh, first uh, double purple arrow. The first double purple arrow uh, claims uh, two things. Uh, basically that uh, if this is true, then this is true, and if this is true, then that is true. So for a particular x, is that the case? Uh, and the answer is, yeah, I think that this is all just, this is all just true. Because, uh, what did I do to get from here to here? I added 7 to both sides. Well, it's just true that um, if a equals b, uh, then uh, a plus c equals b plus c. In other words, it is a fact of numbers and the way addition works. Even you may have even had a teacher at one point uh, try to teach you the, the uh, goofy uh, names for these things. This is called the addition property of equality. And the addition property of equality says uh, that if a equals b, basically that you can add a uh, number to both, uh, to both sides of an equation and the equation still holds. Or rather, the new equation uh, holds. Uh, so if this is true, then, uh, then this is true. And therefore, if there is some particular number x which is a solution to the first equation, then by uh, adding uh, that, in other words, uh, the first equation is true uh, for that particular x, then uh, the second equation will also be true. Uh, and so if a particular x works in this equation, then that same x must work in this equation. I think I'm going too slowly here, uh, but uh, what's important is that the converse must also hold. So if... Uh, a plus c equals b plus c, then uh, a equals b. Okay, uh, this is, uh, seems almost the same, but it's actually subtly different. It's the converse. It says that uh, if, you if you have an equation that's true, you can basically uh, subtract a c from both sides. Or if you don't like talking about subtraction, you can just say, you know, cancellation or something. This is the cancellation uh, uh, property of addition. Uh, anyway, this is certainly uh, true. Uh, and you can even prove this if you really want to, if you want to be kind of crazy about it. Uh, and therefore, uh, what I have now just shown in, in two sort of separate arguments uh, is that uh, if uh, a, equal, a equals b sort of if and only if a plus c equals b plus c. And thus, not only is it true that if a particular um, uh, number x uh, satisfies this equation, then it must satisfy the second equation, but vice versa. If a particular x satisfies this equation, it must satisfy that equation as well. And therefore, it really is true uh, what I've written here with this purple arrow, which is that these two equations are equivalent to each other. Uh, and uh, therefore, since these two equations are equivalent, if my overall goal were to solve this equation, I can completely now ignore this first equation and I can just focus on the simpler problem of solving the second equation because any solution to one must be a solution to two and any solution to two must be also a solution to one. And then uh, the same thing happens uh, in this second uh, double purple arrow, right? I divided both sides by nine. Or perhaps it's better to think of uh, what happened as multiplying both sides by one ninth. And uh, so uh, here we go. Uh, if a equals b, um, then uh, ac equals bc, uh, and for the moment let's just focus on the case where, um, where c is not zero, uh, which it isn't uh, above, c is, is one ninth. Okay, this is just a, another fact of arithmetic, this is the multiplication property of equality. And then the converse is also true. Uh, if ac equals bc, um, specifically with c not equal to zero, uh, then uh, we conclude that uh, A equals B. Uh, cancellation property of multiplication or something like that. These names are, aren't important. What is important is that, that, that these, these hold, uh, and therefore uh, uh, A equals B if and only if um, AC uh, equals BC. 
And that's true as long as, as c is not zero. And so, uh, these key, very, uh, this, this is just totally algebra one, or it's even, um, it's even really before algebra one. Uh, what we can say about these two processes is that they are equivalence preserving. The process of adding a number to both sides of an equation is equivalence preserving. And the process of multiplying a non-zero number by both sides of an equation is, an equi is equivalence preserving. Uh, any solution to this equation must also be a solution to this equation. And any solution to this third one must also be a solution to the second one. And uh, therefore, I've justified this uh, second uh, purple double arrow. Meaning uh, that um, what was really going on, the true logic of uh, single variable equation solving, is that you take the equation you actually care about and you replace it with an another equation which is equivalent. And you keep replacing an equation with a simpler equation. And if at every step along the way you replace it with an equivalent equation, then when you're all done, uh, the final equation must have the same uh, uh, solutions as your original one. And here it's just obvious by inspection that the solution to this equation is 2. Therefore, 2 must be a solution to the first equation. And I don't even have to check. Okay, so... To all you middle school math teachers who are watching this video right now, uh, when you solve a, a, an equation in one variable, what you're really doing is you are, um, you are uh, uh, proposing uh, that the student uh, uh, create a sequence of equations, uh, each of which is equivalent to, to the previous one. And therefore, by solving the final equation, you automatically solve the first one. Okay. Um, before, uh, this, is like, this is like a deep, low-level analysis of, uh, of what's going on in, in Algebra 1, uh, and I'm not um, wasting your, your time, uh, hopefully, um, because, oh, interesting, stapling error. Uh, I think this might be a good time to, to link this back to something that you learned in pre-calc A, um, which is that not, uh, which is that, that, that uh, though this is the ideal, uh, to pursue only equivalence-preserving operations. There are some operations which are not equivalence-preserving. Uh, so take, for example, um, this equation, uh, root x equals 5. Okay, it's pretty just obvious that the solution um, to, this, uh, um, to this equation is, is 25. So kind of off in the margins here, I will just uh, write uh, 25, just note uh, that, that 25 is the, this is the solution set to this equation. This is the full set of numbers uh, which make this equation true. Uh, but supposing you didn't see that immediately, or supposing you wanted to like show some work or something like that, whatever that means, then you might be encouraged to square both sides of this equation. Well, if you square both sides of this equation, then you just get x equals 25. And that certainly does feel like you made some progress, or at least it feels simpler, or it feels like you did something. And what is the solution to this equation? Well, it's of course 25, and now we are all happy. Okay, so what I have just convinced you, hopefully, is that uh, so-called squaring both sides is a legitimate mathematical technique that we might want to pursue uh, to help us solve equations. Okay, great. Um, but uh, you should be a little bit worried about squaring both sides uh, because, note, that even though, um, so note the following, if a equals b, it does hold that a squared equals b squared. That's just certainly a true fact of arithmetic. But uh, the converse, a squared equals b squared, uh, does not imply uh, a equals b. So this is, um, let's see, uh, run, uh, running it as on board space management, this is true, but this is, is false. Uh, and uh, the reason uh, this is false is, well, because of negative numbers, right? Um, so uh, if A is uh, 5 and B is negative 5, then uh, this is true, uh, but, this is, but this is false. And therefore, um, squaring both sides uh, holds a kind of a strange uh, position in our uh, in our in our uh, algebraic um, uh, toolbox, because uh, it is an operation that you can do to both sides. Which, uh, if there was a solution, uh, if an equation uh, had a certain solution, then um, let me make sure I say this right. If an equation such as this one uh, holds for a particular value of x, such as 25, 
then that solution will still be a solution to the second equation. Uh, if a equals b, then a squared equals b squared, but not vice versa. And so, uh, this is kind of now a little bit uh, silly, but take the equation x equals 6. Well, you might think, why would any crazy person do anything to this equation uh, because it's already done? Indeed, I agree with you. But let's just kind of uh, think about this for a second. Uh, the solution set to this equation x equals 6 is obviously 6. If you square both sides, however, just because that's just some cool thing that you heard about that you feel like doing all of a sudden, then you get that there are two solutions here, 6 and negative 6. And so, uh, the solution to the first equation was still a solution to the second equation, but the solution to the second equation, uh, one of these solutions, negative 6, was not a solution to the original. And that's because uh, this is not an if and only if situation. What is the conclusion? Squaring both sides is not equivalence preserving. It is not an equivalence preserving operation, and that's why Mr. Kirk told you last year in pre -calc A, if you didn't know already, that when you square both sides of an equation, it's, per it's, uh, it's possible that you've created these other things called extraneous solutions, which are solutions to your final equation, but are not solutions to your original equation, which is why you need to check. Okay, ideally, uh, if we can get away with it, we would like to pursue equivalence preserving operations only. All right, Two, you might be wondering, what is, this, what is all this about? Well, I've now uh, uh, sort of, uh, now that we've discussed the logic of equation solving, and I apologize if this is something you already uh, understood very thoroughly uh, before, uh, because this is kind of review in a way, although you probably never had this exact type of conversation. It's now time to return to uh, solving systems of two equations in two variables. Um, but now I think, hopefully, uh, I have, I've sort of set the standard. And the standard is, I would like to solve this, well, what we just learned is that in Algebra 1, solving an equation is really, uh, 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 is really a process of um, replacing one equation with a new one creating a sequence of, of equations, each of which is equivalent to the previous. And now that is what I want to do with this system. I would like to solve this system in, this, in an extremely organized way, such that um, I modify the system slightly to produce an equivalent system. Okay, so uh, let's do it. So here I have a system of equations. It's the same one that we already solved uh, back, uh, back in the Zoom call on Monday and Tuesday. Let's do something to it. Uh, okay, so uh, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, well, in preparation for, uh, well, it's what we did in class, right? We multiplied the first one by 7 and the second one by 3. So I'm just going to do that right now. So I will, uh, I'm going to be just a little bit obnoxious and I'm going to do just one thing at a time. Um, so I will uh, multiply the second equation by 3. Okay, so, um, yeah, great. Okay, so I hope you agree now that uh, this second system of equations is equivalent to the first one. Let's talk out why we know that this is true. Well, I'm, I'm actually even gonna, gonna put a sort of box around this first system of equations because it's as if you were handed this um, uh, system on a note card, say. And your goal was to solve it. And what you do then is to get out a, a blank note card. And on this new blank note card over here, you're going to write a new system of equations. And if you do it properly, uh, the new system of equations will be equivalent to the first one. In the sense that um, any solution to this system will be a solution to the first one. And any solution to the first one will be a solution to the second one. And here I think that's just true. Because, of course, the first equation just hasn't even changed. And the second equation, all I did was uh, multiply both sides by 3. And we already agreed that, we talked it out from 10 minutes ago, that multiplying both sides by 3 is an equivalence-preserving operation. Uh, okay, what that means is that uh, since this solution, since this system is equivalent to the first one, I can take the first uh, uh, system and throw it in the garbage. 
So I want you to imagine us crumbling up this 3x5 index card and throwing it out. I don't need it ever again because everything I need is now on this second note card. Okay, let's proceed. Um, well, what am I gonna do next? Now I'm gonna sort of continue on with the algorithm I learned in algebra one. Oh, so equivalence preserving, so the arrow goes both ways. Okay, uh, well here I'm gonna multiply both sides by seven. So I get 35x uh, plus 21y equals uh, 70 and 56 is 126. Um, yeah. Good. And here I have 6x uh, minus 21y equals a negative 3. Okay, what have I done? Uh, all I did was to multiply the first equation on both sides by 7. Multiplying uh, an equation by 7 on both sides is certainly equivalence preserving. So any ordered pair x comma y, which satisfies this third system of equations, must also satisfy the second one and vice versa. So it really is true that um, uh, this, uh, uh, that these two systems are equivalent. And now I have everything on my, my third note card, and now I throw out my second note card. It's gone. I'm only living in the moment right here. All right, and now something kind of weird happens, because if we were to go back to the algorithm that we learned in Algebra 1, the very next step is to add both equations. And, well, that's um, kind of what... Uh, we're going to do next, right? We're going to just add both equations together. If we add the two equations together, we get 41x uh, equals 123. And you were encouraged uh, in Algebra 1 to just basically that would be the next thing that you would write on your paper. You would just add the two equations. But something has kind of gone wrong. Because um, if this is what is on my fourth note card, I have some kind of problem. Um, because now I claim that uh, this something, something is, something has gone wrong, right? Uh, somehow I don't have enough information on this note card to proceed with the problem. I can find that, uh, that x is 3, uh, but then what is y? Uh, maybe is one way of putting it. Okay, if we were live in real class, uh, I had everyone working in groups with, with actually a stack of note cards, and some people kind of figure it out, right? <coughs> what can we do, or what should we do, or what should we have done uh, to get from, from, from this box to this one? Somehow, I have to uh, invent some new equivalence-preserving operation, and actually, uh, maybe it's not, it's not so hard to see, right? What, what should I have done to get from from this uh, step three to step four. Well, it's kind of like I want to add the equations, but then I need to like keep some information about x and about the relationship between x and y. And in fact, um, that's exactly it, right? What we really do, I'll just tell you, because you know, I'm recording this video, what we're gonna really do is we're going to uh, add the two equations and we're going to replace equation two with the result of that addition. In other words, add these two equations, and what you get is 41x, um, uh, I guess I should write it like this, uh, what you get is, I suppose it doesn't matter how you do it, uh, sure, uh, what you get is uh, 41x uh, equals 123, but now, and I will put uh, my red box ar around this, uh, now this is my fourth note card. And I think this is a little bit subtle, and not something that you would have just come up with on your own unnecessarily, but I claim now that this note card uh, is uh, sufficient to proceed with the problem. In other words, that this one, this system is equivalent to the previous one, and, uh, and that I can just take this third uh, note card and throw it in the garbage. And, uh, okay, what, what have I actually uh, done here is I uh, replaced an equation with the sum of it and another equation. Um, and the claim I want to make, I guess, so the claim is that the following operation is an equivalence preserving operation with systems. That if I have one system of equations, A equals B and C equals D, then an equivalent system is um, 
a equals b, a plus a plus c equals b plus d. Okay, in other words, one may, with a given system, with a particular system of equations, replace one of the equations with the sum of it and another equation. Why is this equivalence preserving? Uh, let's just talk it out uh, really quickly. Suppose um, a equals b and c equals d are true. Why must this be true? In other words, I would like to justify the, the forward uh, step. Uh, well, uh, okay, so why should this be true? Well, why is a equals b true? Well, because I already knew a equals b was true, by assumption. Why is the second equation true? Well, if these two are both true, then um, what that means <laughs> is that a and b are in fact just the same number. And so if a and b are in fact just the same number, then I'm allowed to add the same number to both sides of another equation, and I know it's true. Therefore, I claim that if the left system is true, then the right system is true as well. Okay, how about the going from right to left direction? Now I'm going to suppose that these two are true. Uh, why should this system of equations uh, be, uh, be true? Uh, well, once again, one of the equations is just a straight copy from the previous one. And uh, now, um, well, uh, if a plus c equals b plus d, but a and b are the same number, then I can just cancel those two numbers from both sides. And therefore, c does equal d. All right. This is a kind of a weird and low-level um, uh, conversation that's also a little bit boring. Um, but what I, what I really have just uh, proven to you is that the following operation is an equivalence-preserving operation on systems. Uh, replace an equation with the sum of it and another equation. Uh, and I don't think that's something you would have just thought of. I could have just told you that, but okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to erase this because of space, and now um, I will uh, sort of keep going with this problem. Uh, and Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to just continue to do only sort of one step at a time, just, just because. Uh, can I replace this system with a new one? Well, first of all, I don't need that to be 21 anymore, so why don't I just multi divide uh, back through by 7, or if you want, multiply through by 1 7th. So that will give me back to 5x uh, plus uh, 3y um, equals 18, and 41x uh, equals 123. So here I have a, a new system. This is my fifth system uh, for reasons we already discussed. This is um, equivalent uh, to the previous one because all I did was uh, multiply both sides by, by 7. Uh, I also kind of don't need this to be 41, so I can write this as 5x plus 3y equals 18, and here I get, um, I guess, x equals 3. Okay, now, uh, good. A normal person would stop here and realize, oh, okay, if x equals 3, let me just substitute it in and, and get, uh, and get, uh, and figure out what y is. But I, I, don't, I, want, I don't want to do that. I want to uh, completely reveal the logic uh, of what's going on. Uh, and so um, uh, let's keep going. Uh, and, and the sort of keep going here is, um, uh, is to basically do more linear combination. I really want this to be like negative 5, basically, here. So let's do that, right? Let's. Uh, multiply both sides of equation 2 by negative 5, giving me 5x plus 3y equals 18, and negative 5x uh, equals negative 15. And I hope you agree that this system is equivalent uh, to the previous one, and hence, since all these systems are equivalent to each other, each time I'm throwing out all of my scratch work, and the only thing I need is this, is, is this system right here. Um, okay, uh, what next? Well, now I'm going to do that, uh, that new uh, thing that I learned, which is to um, replace an equation with the sum of it and another equation. 
Uh, and so I'm going to replace equation 1 with the sum of it and equation 2. Uh, and that's going to give me 3y uh, equals uh, 3. And then I still have uh, my uh, negative 5x uh, equals, equals negative 15. Um, and okay. Uh, this equation is equivalent uh, to, this system of equations is equivalent uh, to the previous one because replacing an equation with the sum of it and another equation is equivalent to preserving. And then finally, I can, um, over here, I can divide both sides by 3, so I get y equals 1, um, negative 5x equals negative 15. And actually, finally, finally, uh, I get y equals 1 and uh, x equals 3. Did that just something wrong? No. Uh, good. Woo! Okay. So, that was so tedious. And really, you don't have to go into that much detail every single time. Uh, in particular, this whole thing about doing only one step at a time was not important at all. Uh, I just did that for, for clarity. Uh, but I know it, it was kind of tedious. What is important is the logic of, of what's happening here. The logic of what's happening here is, I start with a system. I replace it with another equivalent system. I replace it with another equivalent system. Replace, 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 replace. And when I'm all done, I don't, and I don't ever have to look back. When I, I stop, when the solution to my system uh, of equations is so obvious that there's simply nothing more to do. x equals 3 and y equals 1, which we normally just then we just report our answer as 3 comma 1, is obviously a solution to this system, but I can now say with confidence that it's a solution to the original system as well, uh, because every one of these systems is equivalent, which just means has the same solution set. Uh, okay, so... Um, yeah, I know, like, doing something slowly and more carefully that you already know how to do is sort of considered sort of boring, but uh, it's this kind of uh, clarity with respect to, to, to approach that's going to help us when things get way more complicated. And the when things get way more complicated, I, I alluded to this on, on Monday and Tuesday, is when you have, for example, three systems, three equations and three variables, or three equations and four variables, or four equations and three variables, or something kind of more crazy like that, uh, when it's no longer clear uh, what, uh, what are the possible outcomes. Uh, okay, if you always follow this method, then you sort of never lose track of, of anything that's going on. All right, and now I claim, I'm not going to write this down because I, I really, this video is already getting way, uh, way too long, but I claim that there are only three things you ever need to be able to do to solve a system of equations. I'll post my notes on this, so I'll just say them out loud. It's also in the book, uh, which you don't have, <laughs> some of you. Um, one thing you might want to do when solving a system of equations is interchange two rows. Okay, that sounds extremely silly, but that's a thing, right? You might want to swap the order of two rows. Clearly, that's equivalence preserving. Another thing you might want to do when solving a system of equations is to multiply one equation uh, on both sides by a non-zero constant. We talk that out. That is also equivalence preserving. And then the third thing you might want to do is to uh, replace an equation with the sum of it and another equation. I'm going to get Theo. Okay, bye. You're going to have some cooking related. Bye. Bye. Um, so, uh, I claim that... Um, those three methods are, in fact, all that is required. So the entire, um, the entire, uh, the <laughs> entire process of solving uh, a system of, uh, of linear equations uh, can be uh, achieved always by following just those, those three rules. Okay, um, good. We're going to do three examples and then... Stop, I guess, because we should, we should stop, because it's getting kind of a little bit too much. Um, okay, 
So uh, let, let's let's do those let's do those three examples right now. Um, interesting. Okay. So uh, example one. Maybe I will try to squeeze it in here. Uh, example two and example three. And if you can do these three uh, problems, uh, I guess I should, in a perfect world, you would, you know, you would stop the video right now or something and, um, and do these, but I, I know it's probably not going to happen, so instead I'll just kind of, I'll do, I'll do, I'm just going to do them and, and you can kind of uh, follow along. Uh, try to stay one minute ahead of me, or, or, or you can pause it if you want. This probably the, would probably be the best thing to do. Uh, so, okay, here is, I'm going to give you, I'm going to just give you the three systems of equations right now. Let me change to purple. Getting a new board as well. Patience, flexibility, and what was the other one? Kindness. So patience that this video is being posted 48 hours after I said it would, and patience that it's kind of boring. Okay, uh, good. Here's a system of equations. I know that you know how to do all of these, or at least I think you do, um, uh, from Algebra 1, uh, but uh, let's do them now, this time uh, sort of pushing this, this new understanding that um, we are going to uh, replace each equation with an equivalent system of equations. Okay, let's go. Uh, so. Here is a system of equations. What can I do? Uh, well, I want to multiply this uh, first equation by 4 and the second equation by 3. And I think there's no reason to do this in two separate steps. So let's just do it in one step. So if I multiply 3 by 4 here, I get 20x plus 12y equals 36. Uh, and if I multiply 3 by 3 here, I get 6x minus 12y equals 42. I think I did that right. Uh, okay. Uh, and I am very confident, in fact, I'm sure, that these two systems of equations are equivalent to each other. So I now focus all of my attention on the second system, and I throw out the first one. It's gone forever. Uh, all right, now uh, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to replace equation 2 with the sum of it and equation 1, uh, which is to say I'll rewrite this as 26x equals uh, 78. But uh, also, at the same time, I am going to divide... Is everyone cool with that? I think everyone should be cool with that, right? I'm replacing equation 2 with the sum of it and equation 1. That's what we learned was an equivalence-preserving operation. And then, uh, well, okay, maybe I'll just do that. So 20x plus 12y uh, equals uh, 36. Uh, and now, so that's equivalent, and now, running out of space, let me divide this back through by 4. So giving me 5x plus 3y equals 9. And here I will divide through by, uh, by 3, I guess. Um, uh, what is that? Uh, f um, yeah. Yeah. Or not divide through by 26, which just is 3. Yeah, so we get x equals uh, 3. Okay, we're almost done, and in fact, we could just, if we were normal people, we could stop. I'm squeezing this in. Um, but instead, I'm going to do one more step, which is to replace this second, I'm going to multiply the second equation by negative 5. So I get 5x plus 3y equals 9, and negative 5x equals negative 15. And then the final thing I'm going to do is to replace the first equation by the sum of it and the second equation. And if I do that, I get 3y equals um, negative 6, and here I divide through by 5, so I get x equals 3. Okay, and I did run out of space. This is terrible board management, but what we really have is x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. Uh, okay, <laughs> um, 
So, all right, uh, and I even sort of ran out, I ran out all the way, I totally just ran out of space. But, uh, note that with each uh, replacement of one system with another, because I know that the systems uh, are, are all equivalent to each other, um, by solving the last system, I automatically also solve the first one. Okay, and I think this is important um, uh, now, because take this uh, system of equations. Well, first of all, you might say, uh, okay, isn't this just the same thing? Well, sort of. Um, I'm going to divide both sides here by 3, so that gives me um, 3x plus 2y uh, equals 1. And here I'm going to divide uh, both sides by uh, 4, and that gives me negative 3x um, minus 2y equals seven fourths. Okay, but now I realize that someone's kind of like tricking me or something. Something weird is going on here. In fact, you know what? I, I changed my mind. Um, well, too late, I guess. Uh, do I want to do that? Sure, sure I do. Uh, this is fun. Uh, okay, um, so, uh, no, let me, let me just it's actually just a slightly prettier if I do it a tiny bit differently. Let me, just, let me just be sort of more normal about this. Let me just notice that my first equation uh, has all coefficients which are multiples of 3, so I'll divide by 3. So I get 3x plus 2y equals 1, and let me just do nothing with my second equation because my second equation doesn't have that, that nice property. So I get negative 12x minus 8y uh, equals 7. So I'm just kind of humming right along, uh, and now I'm going to kind of do my thing, and my thing is, um, let me multiply by the first equation by 4. So if I multiply the first equation by 4, I get 12x plus 8y equals 4, and the second equation I get negative 12x minus 8y equals 7. Okay, all looks great. What's the next step? The next step is to replace an equation with the sum of it and another equation. And so I get 12x plus 8y equals 4, and now I'm going to replace equation 2 with the sum of it and equation 1. Well, when I, when I now add these two equations, I get 0 equals 11. And now I'm in a very interesting situation. You did problems like this in Algebra 1, probably, but you probably did not write it like this. But here now, it is crystal clear, I think, if you've been appreciating the logic, what is going on. What is going on is that I have this system of equations right here. It's equivalent to the previous one, which is equivalent to the previous one, which is equivalent to the previous one. Uh, and yet, this system of equations, this final one, has a certain property. It has the property that uh, one of my equations, 0 equals 11, is just false. If since 0 equals, equals 11 is just false, and the entire uh, definition of, of a system of equations, uh, uh, of a solution to a system of equations, is, a, is an ordered pair, x comma y, which makes both, uh, which makes all the equations true, then no matter what ordered pair, x comma y, you give me, it cannot possibly make that second equation true, because that second equation is just false. Since the second equation is always false, no matter what x and y are, then there is no ordered pair x comma y which can satisfy this system. And if there's no ordered pair which can satisfy this system, then that means that this system has no solutions. And, to be even stronger about it, since this system has no solutions, it means my original system has no solutions also, because I followed along the way equivalence-preserving operations the whole time. Okay, last uh, problem. Uh, let me, uh, once again, do the normal thing. I here notice that everything is a multiple of 5, so I'll divide through by 5, and I get x minus 2y uh, equals negative 5. Here I'm going to divide through by negative 4, and that gives me x minus 2y equals negative 5. And now I feel, aha, someone is like tricking me or something, because in fact, once I remove the disguise, uh, these two equations are just the same equation. And do I really even have two equations? I really don't. I really just have one, you might say. Uh, okay, and once again, a normal person would stop there, but I don't want to be normal. I want to uh, 
uh, pursue uh, what we've learned today. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to try to make progress. And here progress is to replace the second equation with the sum of it and the first equation. Uh, actually, I don't really want to do that. I want to uh, replace the first equation with uh, uh, negative 1 times the second equation. That's like, also a thing. So in other words, you just subtract the two equations. And when you subtract the two equations from each other, you get 0 equals 0. But 0 equals 0 is just a tautology. That's just true always. And so it has no effect whatsoever uh, on this system. Uh, any ordered pair x comma y is going to automatically satisfy 0 equals 0. So it's, it's like it's not there at all. Okay, and now I just have to stop or something and appreciate what's going on. What is going on? Well, uh, I'm still trying to solve the system after all. And uh, you, you might say that this system now just has only one equation. It's just that one. And uh, I think in Algebra 1, uh, I, for some reason they must teach it this way because so many pre -calc C students uh, uh, say the same thing. Here people just say, oh, there are an infinite number of solutions. And I think that's just what they trained you to say in Algebra 1. Just infinite number of solutions. Woo! But saying that there are an infinite number of solutions, that's correct by the way, is not the same thing as saying that every ordered pair is a solution. Uh, for example, just to pick an ordered pair off the top of my head, 1 comma 5 uh, is not going to be a solution uh, to, this, to this system because if you plug in 1 for x and 5 for y, it's just false. So it's not true that every ordered pair is a solution. What is true is that every point on the line x minus 2y equals negative 5 is a solution. Okay, and we could just write that, right? We could just write uh, every number on that line is a solution, but there's a little bit more organized way to do this. And remember, the goal of, uh, uh, of what we're doing is to write all the, is to solve the, to solve the systems. Solve means uh, give all solutions, if there are any, and a solution is, a, is an ordered pair. And so what I would like to do is list out all ordered pairs which satisfy this. And there's a kind of a technique to do this in which you introduce a free parameter. So this is like a new thing. You say, okay, let's, let, um, let y be represented by some new letter called a, which we think of as varying across all the real numbers. Well, if y is a, then what can I say about x? Well, then x is just like 2a minus 5, because I can just add 2y to the other side. And therefore, one way of expressing the solution set to this system is to say it's every ordered pair of the form 2a minus 5 comma a. And that is actually just the answer to this problem. It's, it's, it's the answer to this problem is there are, there are an infinite number of solutions uh, and it's every ordered pair uh, in which uh, the x-coordinate is uh, twice the y-coordinate minus 5. In other words, every ordered pair of the form 2a minus 5 comma a. Uh, okay, uh, good. So uh, I think this, well, hopefully you watched this entire video uh, and you learned uh, this technique and we'll, uh, I'm going to post this tonight and maybe people will, will, will have watched it, uh, hopefully, and, and, but maybe not. Uh, and uh, tomorrow we'll do, we'll do some new things. Okay. Goodbye.